Hi everyone, it's Betty, the speech pathologist here. So today I want to talk to you about the importance of play. When our children are little, before they start school, they have so many opportunities for structured and unstructured play. And we all know that that's how young children learn. That's how they explore the world, um, learn to communicate, connect with other people, learn problem solving skills and develop physical skills as well. And as our children get older, when they enter school, you know, we, the learning does move more towards something structured and at a desk. But the concept of play is still so important. It still fulfills the same functions of helping them explore the world, learn to communicate, connect with others, problem solve, develop their physical skills. Have you thought about using board games as a way to engage your child in play? Um, board games are really great. Um, I think often we, we forget about them because we, we kind of think, oh, well, can my child engage in this? I'm not sure. But, you know, you, what you might be surprised is a lot of games that um, are, you can involve your children in and they're really good at teaching language and teaching communication for different purposes as well. Um, I've got a few games here, but I'll also talk you through some other things um, that I don't have. And maybe you've got some other stuff at home that um, I haven't mentioned as well. But it's worth having a look. All right, here's what I've got. We've got a humble snakes and ladders. It's an oldie but a goodie. So for those of you who don't know, you've got a board, you've got all the numbers, and, you, and then you take turns rolling the dice. And if you roll four, you move four um, in one direction uh, along the numbers. And when you get to the bottom of the ladder, you can climb up and it skips a few rows. If you get to a snake, you go all the way back down. So already you can hear that I've said a lot of different words about this game. And these are words that you can teach your children. You can model on their systems. You can talk about my turn, your turn, go up, go down, um, give, forgive the dice, number words. Um, you can even do things like opinion words. Don't like it. It's not fair. I'm winning. That kind of stuff. So a nice one. You can also try guess who. So mine's a younger version. And, I mean, they've tried to swap out some of the options to make it more interesting. So not just guessing people, but you can guess animals. But if you're thinking about our older students, our teenagers, there's no reason why we can't swap out these pictures just reprint it and make them celebrities, right? What if you're trying to guess it? What if some of the options are like Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, that kind of that kind of thing? That would still be a nice way to engage your older students. And you're practicing things like asking questions, right? You're asking things like, does your person wear a hat? Do they have long hair? Right? Or on a device, maybe they'll press. Um, eyes and green. You're like, oh, you asked me if they have green eyes. Mm, no, and then you close it. All right, lots of things you can do with this kind of game. Scrabble's a good one too. Yeah, because and this one, what you do is you've got a board and you use the um, letter tiles to form words. And depending on how you place your tiles. Um, you get you can get a certain score and the person who gets the most the highest score wins. So you can target things like spelling. Um, you can get, you know, for some of our students, you might be a bit more forgiving with the spelling. Like it doesn't matter if they've spelt it wrong as long as they've spelt it the way it sounds. So phonetically, you might just uh, play a game that way. Just encourage your children to be spelling because spelling is such a useful um, strategy when they can't find the word on their device. You know, as long as they can spell, like say school, it doesn't matter if they spell it S-K-O-O-L. You know, anyone else reading that would know, oh, you're talking about school, right? It's a really good one. Though. Simple games like Pictionary, it, you don't have to actually buy a game. You can just write some options on a paper to, to so, or get some pictures or photos of words that um, other people have to guess. And your child might need to use other words to describe what it's for and what it looks like, and then people have to guess. 
Um, so there's so many things you can do with board games. Um, and often these are things that we had, you know, lying around in the house, gathering dust in their cupboard. So pull them out, have a go um, and have some fun. It's just so nice to be able to engage children in something that siblings can join in as well, you know, cousins and, you know, after lockdown anyway, or like the neighbor neighbor's kids. Um, yeah, it's nice to give them another way to connect with uh, other children as well as learning language. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.